Welcome back, everyone. Today, we've talked we talked about a lot of players we like. We once in a while we go a little negative. Today is really gonna be like, hey, just don't draft this guy. <laughs> we've decided after what we've been doing so far that we're just, you know what? We're just not gonna do it. Not gonna draft this player, not gonna spend the money. Um, it just isn't worth it in our eyes, right? That this is a guy that y- you should spend anything on and just it just doesn't help your I don't know. It's too much money, and this is for my what I'm going for. It's just too much money and not enough upside is where I'm going. So we each got a player. We're going to say, do not draft this guy. Jeff, who's your guy? Who are you going to tell? And hopefully not get too much hate mail if people like this guy. Yeah, and um, I will say I'm not backing away. We do have other players that we're avoiding. I'm still avoiding Justin Jefferson, just putting that out there. But I did want to give one more guy that I absolutely am not drafting this year in auction, and that is going to be Nico Collins. I liked him a lot last year. I had Nico Collins. He broke out. But what I don't like is having all of these weapons around him, bringing Stefan Diggs, which I don't think that they're accurately assessing, like what that is actually going to do to his production. Tank Dell is also a beast. He looks really, really good in the situations they had. Uh, Nico stayed relatively healthy, and yes, he was a big body down the field, and he has a lot of upside that way. But he, I feel like those numbers aren't going to necessarily continue. And with Diggs, if he does what he's done every other place he's been, he is going to make sure he gets a lot of targets. And even last year, Nico got eight touchdowns. That was really good. But I could could actually still see that dipping a bit. And I do not see him nearing 1,300 yards this time around. So I think that and his ESPN price and his Fantasy Pros price are around the same. I think he's like a 20 nine in fantasy pros and he's going for about 25 in espn leagues i'm just never going to give that kind of money to him i'd rather pay less for like for for the other players around him so um good player sure but i think he's overpriced right now and i think Diggs is they're not assessing correctly what he's going to do that team he's yeah collins is one of those guys i just never i don't think about drafting i don't draft the only i have him on one team and it's a dynasty because i picked him up as a free agent like Mm -hmm. I, last year it just i i don't consider it and you're right that there's too many guys tank Dell is good stefan Diggs i don't think is done i just I, like we've, we've talked about it before i don't i have a hard time believing though that those first six games last year aren't like he's not the last part maybe he's not those first six games but he's more in the middle he's somewhere mm-hmm. else he's not done so i'm right with you i I mean, I like Nico. He's a Michigan guy, so yeah, I have to like him. But I don't have anything wrong with him. I just don't I just, think he's worth the money. I, I'm with you. I'm with you. So, all right, my guy. Um, I actually have changed my mind on who I was going to pick from when before we started this episode. <laughs> so I I just thought about it, and I'm trying to think, who do I have the most conviction in? Who do I really just say, no, let's not do this. It doesn't make sense. Jeff thought I was probably going to go Kyron Williams. I'm not going to go Kyron Williams, even though I still feel that way about Kyron Williams. I don't like the price. He's going almost $40. I Part of the reason with Kyron is I just don't think he was a big, great prospect. I don't think he's that great of a player. Blake Quorum's there. I think he does the same thing. Da, da, da. All that stuff. I've said it a million times, right? It's all true. i still not going to draft Kyron. But no, I just have to just, this isn't going to be news either, but I have to just go all in again on it. It's Travis Kelsey. Stop doing it. Like, I, I can't, I don't get it. I don't get it. He is going yet for twenty five dollars on ESPN. He's he is now he's up over three dollars up ahead of Laporta. He is twelve dollars ahead of Mark Andrews. He is going to turn thirty five years old this season. He's going to be thirty five during the season. And you say, oh yeah, he hasn't slowed down yet, though, right? He's still going, but he did slow down. Why have we all forgotten this? Right? Like I don't, I don't. <laughs> I'm just like I. I does everyone just remembers those like last two games? The, the AFC Championship and the Super Bowl he did very, very well, right? He played very well in those two games. He did. And I think the playoffs in general, he played well. But he was not good weeks eight on last year. First seven weeks of the year, he was still really solid. I remember I telling everyone to, to trade him. And then he had like a big, the 12 for 179 to touchdown. I'm like, ooh, <laughs> maybe I was wrong. And then he did nothing else. From weeks eight on, he never had 100 yards in a game again. He only had one touchdown in the final eight games. What are we doing? Like, six for 58, three for 14, seven for 44, six for 91, four for 81, six for 83, five for 28, five for 44, three for 16. 
What are we doing here? He didn't even hit a thousand yards last year. He had 984 yards in five touchdowns. Man, that's really starting to creep into like, it's getting awfully close to the, you know, just the average tight end numbers. He didn't even hit the six touchdowns, which we always say, like is the average. I don't know, $25 in an auction draft for a guy who wasn't even, I don't even think top 10 tight end for the last half of the year. Man, I, I can't do it. Give me Dalton Kincaid for six or $7, you know, give me Kyle Pitts on a waiver for five bucks, you know, $25. No way. I'm going to go get, um, I'll go get Stefan Diggs with that $20. I saved by getting like Najoku or something. Yeah. I'm once again, hundred percent with you. And just to drive the point home, if you're looking at just a average, like what they actually scored on average when they played in the game, uh, and I'm going half PPR just to split the difference depending on the standard or it doesn't really change it too much. <coughs> Travis Kelsey averaged 11 and a half points, the same exact as Sam Laporta and Hawkinson Andrews were both 11.4, 11.3. So no difference whatsoever. Why are you, what are we paying for we here? Can, we can go all the way down to David Njoku at seven and he was averaging 10. What are you paying for? Yeah. That uh, you're averaging a point more per game. Like, but you're at, but you're spending mm-hmm. double digits. Well, and let's look at week eight on, right? Week seven, he had the big week, he had some okay weeks. He was pretty solid. Right. And so that number you gave is still that's the year round number. Year week, round. Week eight on, which is a big stretch. Somebody at one point made a comment when I was talking mm-hmm. about Kelsey, but why why are you picking that number? Well, that's when he started to be poor. So I don't know what he's he played yeah. very poorly. I don't know. It, from weeks eight on last year. Half PPR or half PPR, eight points per game. You know who had more points per game weeks eight through 18 than Travis Kelsey? That is a lot of games. That is not a small sample size. Uh, you're, you're absolutely right. I did it. So yeah. I just did half yeah. the year, right? So the yeah. last half of the year, he was yeah. the 13th best okay, on that's, average. That's even, okay, that's even half. Oh my. Yeah. Like guys from wait, weeks eight on, the guys ahead of him, Isaiah Likely is ahead of him. Dalton Kincaid, well, Taysom Hill, Cole Komet, Jake Ferguson. Like all these guys, they're they're good players. I like these guys. But why are we spending fifteen, twenty dollars more on Travis right. Kelsey? That's not even again, I'm not saying Travis Kelsey could be the number one tight end at the end of the year. He still has that ability in him. But if he is, he's gonna barely get there and he's not gonna be that much higher than a lot of these guys at all. He's gonna be right there if he even gets over that line somehow. He's not gonna be that much better. So I don't get the I don't get it. I don't I don't get it. No, I think that's it's very, very important to look at because I do think that's where you're throwing away money. And that's why certain guys like Trey McBride and I wish Isaiah likely could have a bigger part in the Baltimore offense, but Andrews is a beast too. Yeah. But some of these younger guys, that's why we're kind of like, yeah, get them instead. Like, and Hawk is obviously hurt. And Njoku, mm-hmm. though, the second half of the season, he was actually averaging the most with 12.6. Yeah. yeah. So, hey, like, why not? throw it out to him if he stays healthy you have a steal let's say save twenty dollars and get Najoku right wild. Like, get save 20 bucks get Shit. Najoku Kittle was yeah. more sustainable and you would still save a bunch of money on him and he's still like mm-hmm. in top five yep yep I I just don't get it don't understand it I'm not gonna have Travis Kelsey on any team I draft this year not a single one will have Travis Kelsey there is just no way because you'll never go for the price that I find acceptable and that's like under ten dollars yeah. <laughs> so it will right, never right. happen so, all right, there we go. That's that's it for don't draft this player. So, eh, Travis Kelsey, not doing it. Not doing it. And then Nico Collins, too. Yeah. Right? So. And then we already talked about Kyron and Joe. Yeah, so. They're still there. So, yeah. all right, <laughs> that'll do it for this one. Talk to you guys next time.